In life, we may find ourselves in a situation where we have to work with individuals. And there's two situations that take place. There are those that you have to work with that maybe have a past that mm, is a little sketchy. At the same time, perhaps you're the person with a bit of a sketchy past. How do we deal with that and what does that look like? Today on Geek Devotions, we're gonna talk about that and Pacific Rim Black. Geeks, welcome to Geek Devotions, a show from Devoted Geeks who are devoted to letting you know that you are loved. I'm Dallas. I'm so glad you've hit the play button today. If you're new to our show, we take geek pop culture items like movies, video games, and comics, and we use them to let you know that you are loved. So if you don't watch past this moment, know this. We love you. Care about you. There is a plan and a purpose for your life. As I said in my intro, we are talking about Pacific Rim Black, which if you haven't seen it, it's a really interesting Netflix series. There's only seven parts, um, and you can watch it like right now. It's anime, it's really interesting. Art style kind of reminds me of uh, Jin Lock and, and also that Ultraman anime that they did a while back, which I, I'm apparently I'm one of the few who actually like that. This movie takes place in the pseudo continuity of the Pacific Rim movies, which I do encourage you to watch the first one and watch the second one if you just really want to. That being said, this particular movie, our series follows a couple of kids who are basically stranded alone in Australia. The government has abandoned Australia as a whole and these two kids' parents were Jaeger pilots and they left them in a secluded place where they would be safe with other people while they tried to find help. Five years later, that help never came. And these two kids find their own Jaeger, which unfortunately also signaled one of the Kaiju that uh, destroyed the entire community they were living in. Now they're on the run and they're on their own trying to survive in Australia, finding other in random individuals. Now I am trying to get through this without giving a lot of spoilers, but there is one particular young lady named May who has a really sordid past. And they find themselves in a situation where May and Taylor, one of the other characters, they had to pilot the Jaeger. Now, if you're new to Pacific Rim, piloting the Jaeger is not like Power Rangers where you just do stuff. It's, it's a little more complicated. <laughs> it involves your brain connecting with another person's brain and working together, meaning you know everything about everything about the person you're doing what they call drifting with, mind drifting. And May's fighting this. She is fighting the drift, but they are needing to really get this working. And Taylor looks at her and he goes, look, I don't care about what you've done. We've got to do this now. And that, my friends, is kind of where we're going with it today's uh, devotion. Because to be honest, there's a lot of individuals out there that you may have to work with and they're locked up, they're shielded up because they're scared of letting people know about their past. They're scared to let people know where they've come from and what they've done because they've suffered judgment for those things in the past. They've had people, unfortunately, in the church treat them less than because of certain things that they've done or has happened to them. So what do we do when we see people that have a sort of past? How should we handle them? Well, I would challenge us to look back to the scriptures of some individuals. First, you have Moses. Uh, they, he's the dude that led people out of slavery, if you remember correctly. <laughs> the Jews call him um, Rabinu Moshi, or Moshi Rabinu. If, I'm, if you're Jewish and you know better than me, please correct me. I don't want to be dishonoring to you at all and saying things incorrectly. But basically, it's Moses, our teacher. They look at this man with high respect, high regard, yet... Moses was a man who lived the first several years of his life kind of as a traitor to his own people. Now, he didn't realize that, but he lived as an Egyptian leadership, and therefore he was part of a process that enslaved his own people. Yet still, God looked at him and says, no, I've called you to more than this. Let's move out, live a different life from this point forward. And the people of Israel honor him. Again, to this day, they call him Moses the teacher or Moses my teacher. Yet he had a sordid past. Let's look at somebody in the New Testament. Let's look at the Apostle Paul. In the book of Acts, it details that Paul, who at the time was called Saul, was kind of, um, he was the guy that was out to kill the Christians. Like, <laughs> like that was his job, was to literally deliver death warrants to gather up Christians and kill them. Now, granted, it was out of zeal for God because uh, he thought that this Christianity thing was a great heresy, according uh, to the faith. But... He encountered God in a real way. And now we stand, you know, some 2,000 years later, and he is one of the early church fathers. 
He wrote most of our New Testament. He's looked at as someone that we can emulate. We literally have a phrase, uh, follow me as I follow Christ, because of him. Again, real sort of past, real shady past, yet God used him. But how did Jesus actually deal with these individuals in real time, in real life? I want to take you guys to the New Testament where Jesus is dealing with one of his very own disciples. Now, we're all very familiar with the disciple who betrayed Jesus, Judas, and ended up uh, committing uh, suicide later. But what about the disciple Peter? Now, Peter was lockstep with Jesus all the way through. He was very uh, zealous for Jesus and for the kingdom of God. So much so that he even lopped off the dude's ear. Now, Jesus fixed it, put it back together, it was all fine. But that was his zealousness of it. Yet, the night that Jesus is being uh, thrown through a terrible trial, and the night before he's uh, murdered through crucifixion, Peter does something interesting. He denies even know Jesus, knowing Jesus. Denies him three different times, in fact. One of those times he cursed out a kid said, I don't even know the man. Leave me alone. Guys, that's harsh. Like, that's terrible. This dude denied even knowing who Jesus was. Yet, after the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus meets up with the guys. He's on the beach, and he's sitting there, eating some fish, relaxing. And he looks to Peter, and he says, Peter, do you, do you love me? And Peter's like, yeah, of course. He goes, feed my, feed my sheep. And he asked him two more times. And basically what Jesus did is he looked at Peter. I'm summarizing this whole ordeal. I want to encourage you guys, go read these passages. They're, uh, they're popping up on the screen. And I also have links to the uh, Bible Gateway links in the description of this video. But he looks at Peter and basically what he's done, he says, Peter, I don't care what you've done. I know you messed up. I knew you were going to mess up. I warned you that you were going to mess up but I have a plan and purpose for you. I love you still. I know your heart. You said you love me. Go feed my sheep. Go do the work that I've called you to do. We can work through this together. When I look at the biblical examples of people who have shaded past that then are coming into alignment with God, what I see is this. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter what you said before. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. Where are you now in this moment? Have you made a change in your life and you're working, striving forward to become who God has created you to be? Great. Let's work together. Let's walk this out. Let's find hope together. Let's accomplish the mission that God has for us together. Years ago, I was talking with an individual and, and they lived a very shaded, very impure life. And they had a terrible conversation with an individual that that they love dearly. And that person looked at them and says, you don't deserve to have, um, to be in relationship with somebody who remained pure all their life because of what you've done. And they called me up and they asked me, this is true. Do I not deserve this? And I just think about Jesus and Peter <laughs> and Jesus forgiving Peter for all he did. And I asked her, I said, Hey, have you, have you repented of these things? And she said, yeah, yeah, I have. Said, are you are you walking the walk? Have you have you taken your time to go? I'm going to serve Jesus. I'm going to walk this the way that I'm supposed to now. She goes, Yeah. And I said, If Jesus has forgiven you, who am I to not forgive you? If Jesus has said, I'm going to restore you, who am I to deny that you're being restored? So this is my challenge when it comes time for you to to walk with people. To walk things out with them, to work with them. They may have a sordid past. They may even have a past that may be affected you directly. But if they have earnestly asked for forgiveness and they have sought God and they're working this thing out, who are you to cast greater judgment on them than God? And for those of you who maybe are in the situation and this is you right now, you're the individual who has a past that you are ashamed of, you're afraid to work with people. You're afraid to be part of things in the church because you feel like you're not qualified because of the things you've done in the past. Know this. You are loved. God has a plan and purpose for you. If God has forgiven you, you're forgiven. 
Now, is there a process of working into things? Sure, that happens. But walk it slowly, okay? Take your time. Even the Apostle Paul had to take some time sitting under the, the, the uh, disciples when he first became a Christian so they can walk him through some things, so they could disciple him, so they can make sure that he's being honest and sincere about the things. This is a practice that's not impractical. But know this, it's just a timing thing. Don't give up, keep walking this out and let God do a work in your life and through you, through you taking time to walk through this process, there will be much more seen by others that glorifies Christ. Guys, I really hope this devotion has encouraged you and challenged you a little bit in how you deal with people and how you see people. So for the question of the week is simply this, how do you do this? How do you walk through these situations with other individuals? How have you helped to restore individuals who may be fallen and they need to, to kind of be discipled? Let us know, leave comments down below. I also encourage you guys to check out my very cool shirt, says Team Womp. This shirt, my friends, came from my buddy, Francisco Ruiz, over at Retro Rewind Podcast. Him and Paul do an amazing podcast where they review movies, video games, and comics that are, or not necessarily comic books, but uh, they're 15 years old or older, and um, they're they're fantastic guys, and you get this from their store. I have links down in the description below for this shirt and some of their other great stuff. Go check out their podcast. It's amazing. Much better than our podcast, Com Talk, which, by the way, we've been doing the road to Godzilla vs. Kong. You, should, you might want to check that out if you're interested in that. Check out your favorite podcast catcher for Com Talk by Geek Devotions for that. I also want you guys to know that we have a special guest who's going to be taking over the show at the end of the month. His name is Kirk, and he is uh, like the missions director over at the uh, Atlanta Dream Center. He's a fantastic individual. I cannot wait for you guys to experience uh, what he's going to bring you guys and sharing his heart. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so that you are notified. I'll hit the bell symbol so you're notified when that video goes live later this month. It's going to be awesome. Finally, guys, check out our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just look for Geek Devotions. And then for more content, check out geekdevotions.com. I think I've said everything. I'm running out of breath. I'm going to get some coffee because I have lots of work to do. That being said, stay devoted. Peace and love.